Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at sedimentary environments and sedimentary rocks. So now we're going to take some time to think about how breccias and conglomerates form and this is going to correspond to section 7.8 of your textbook. So if you remember breccias and conglomerates are classic sedimentary rocks which, can, which are dominated by class which are larger than two millimeters in diameter. So this means these rocks are going to be dominated by gravel size clasts, cobble size clasts, and boulder size clasts. So the clasts themselves are easily visible in both breccias and conglomerates. We can see in both of these examples here, you can quite easily see the clasts right there. And you can see we have a Sharpie here for scale. So this class is about half a Sharpie. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a small cobble in terms of its size. Over here, we have a rock hammer for scale. So you can see that this class down here is clearly going to be a boulder. This class here is probably going to be a cobble, then you'll have smaller, more gravelly material as well. Now, these clasts are held in place by the matrix, and the matrix essentially is the cement. So the type of matrix you have with breccias and conglomerates is highly variable, and it depends on the exact conditions of the environment in which that breccia or conglomerate was forming. So in this particular instance, we have a breccia that has a rocky matrix. So the matrix in between these breccia class probably consists of quite fine pieces of the rocks which are making up the larger class. In this case, we have the class being, being uh, held in place by a matrix which consists of mud. But depending on the type of environment, the matrix can differ. So for instance, if you had a breccia or conglomerate forming in a volcanically active environment, the matrix could consist of uh, pyroclastic material for instance. Now in terms of breccias themselves because the class are angular that suggests that they typically the sediment itself does not get transported that far and so that means whatever events form breccias tend to be relatively short-lived because remember the longer something gets transported for the more rounded the class will become. So because the class is so angular that would suggest transport was not extensive. So the types of environments in which we would expect to find breccias would be in, in uh, steep mountain environments. So for instance, these are the types of environments where we might have landslides, or they're also the type of environments where we might have uh, debris flows which form. In this case, you can see we have a situation where we have a valley here, one side of the valley there, and the other side of the valley here. And you can see we have a debris flow that's coming down the valley and it's spreading out here to form a fan-shaped feature which we refer to as an alluvial fan. We also have uh, a picture of a debris flow here, and these debris flows can vary in how they form, but typically debris flows will often be associated with heavy rain. And this is the kind of situation you might get in arid environments, for instance, you know, desert or semi-desert environments, which are typically dry, so you're going to have lots of loosely consolidated sediment around, and then all of a sudden there's one very big, very short-lived thunderstorm, it dumps a whole load of water very quickly, and so you end up with this flow of water and poorly sorted sediment that essentially ranges all the way from mud to maybe if strong enough boulder-sized class, and we refer to these flows as debris flows. Once again, though, this is a relatively short-lived event, so the class aren't going to get transported for that long, and so they're not going to have time to be become rounded. Now once again conglomerates have to have class in excess of two millimeters so we're going to have to have gravel sized clasts, cobble sized class or boulders. Unlike the breccia on the other hand the class are going to be sub rounded to rounded in shape. So we can see you know a beautiful example of a, a rounded class right here and you can see in this picture we have some examples of some sub-rounded class. So we can see, for instance, this class right here has a relatively sharp corner right there. But on the other hand, this corner up here is rounded. So we can see that, you know, in, in both of these instances, we have a either rounded or sub-rounded class. So in terms of the matrix, well, we can see in both these situations, this matrix appears to be made of rock fragments, so it appears to be made of quite sandy looking material, and this matrix appears to be more muddy. And once again, just like the breccia, the type of metric, matrix you get will be a reflection of the environment in which that sediment is being deposited. So where do we get conglomerates? So we need to remember that we're dealing with environments where the sediment is being transported for longer periods of time. So conglomerates don't tend to be associated with short-lived events like uh, landslides or debris flows. Uh, 
they tend to be associated with more energetic environments where the sediment is going to be transported or moved around for a prolonged period of time. So the classic example would be uh, rivers that we get in mountains. And so here we can see we have a picture of a river channel and the rivers that we get in mountains tend to be a particular type of river which we refer to as a braided river. And these braided rivers are typically in, in quite steep environments so the water's dropping quite quickly so the water has quite a lot of energy and this means it can transport quite a broad range of class sizes so you can see in this image here you can see we definitely have cobble and gravel sized class we're also going to have quite a lot of sand so the fact we have these larger class tells us that the environment is energetic and the fact that the class have been rounded clearly shows that they've been transported by the water for a prolonged period of time and that's allowed the sharp corners to be knocked off the class. We can also have conglomerates being formed due to glacial processes. So this is something which is referred to as a moraine. And a moraine consists of the sediment which is deposited when a glacier melts. So you need to remember, although we typically think of a glacier as just consisting of ice, it doesn't. There is also a large amount of sediment which is held within that ice. And so when that ice melts, the sediment becomes liberated. It becomes, you know, it's allowed to form, it's allowed to be deposited. And so what we can see here is the buildup of sediment associated with the melting glacial ice. And it forms a very, very distinctive type of conglomerate. So the conglomerates which are formed by glaciers are often referred to as glacial tills. And they typically consist of uh, a lot of clasts, but there is also a very, very large amount of very muddy so silt and clay size matrix. So you will have lots of big class in your conglomerate, but they'll often be separated from each other by quite large amounts of muddy matrix. And so it makes a rather distinctive looking conglomerate. It doesn't look anything like these. So in this case, you can see the, uh, the field of view is mostly taken up by the clasts. In the case of a till, on the other hand, the field of view would be mostly matrix with only a few uh, rounded class spread out in that field of view. The final example where we would expect to find conglomerates forming is in energetic beach environments. So these are environments typically where the waves that are hitting the beach are quite powerful. And so that means they can move larger class around. And because they can move those larger class, it means those class can become rounded. And so you can see here in this beach sediment, we have a range of very well rounded class here. You can see this, uh, this oval class right here. And so this is a reflection of the fact that we're obviously dealing with quite a high energy beach environment. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a good day.